opportunity to do that. Um, it's my pleasure now to introduce our next keynote speaker. Uh, it's Professor Alan Lau, who is Pro-Vice-Chancellor Pro of Research Performance and Development at Swinburne University of Technology. Uh, Professor Lau was appointed Pro-Vice-Chancellor uh, in April 2016. He is responsible for supporting and enhancing Swinburne's global ranking profile while also strengthening the university's research performance, uh, research schemes, and linking the university with international high quality scholars. Uh, his own journey into academia wasn't particularly typical. Uh, he received four years of uh, a craft apprenticeship training and airline maintenance uh, even before he did his bachelor's degree in Australia. Uh, he got his PhD from HK Poly U, uh, where he spent many years uh, researching and working, uh, becoming associate dean in the faculty of engineering, looking after rankings and industrial uh, relations. Um, I'll let him speak now. He's talking on how a university strategy can drive success in the world rankings. Please join me in welcoming Professor Alan Lau. Good morning. Oh, can you hear my voice? Uh, let me see. Let's try this one. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Alan Lau, originally from Hong Kong and now working in Australia. So what I'm trying to do is uh, I will try to share with you about some of the strategies that we have been using to um, drive up our rankings. Of course, uh, Swinburne is not a big university. It's still a quite small university in Australia as compared with the student size. But we, that, that one of the reasons is because we are small, we cannot get a lot of funding from the government. And even from the industry, it's uh, not that easy in Australia. But that's the reason why we needed the strategy, how to attract talents, how to attract more students. So that is the reason why I would like to spend you this opportunity to share with all of you. So here are some of my backgrounds. Okay, my name is Alan, and um, uh, I'm a provider chancellor. I look after research in the university, and one of the most important things is uh, ranking. And of course, if you talk about ranking, we have a lot of ranking system in the world, and which ranking is very important. Of course, uh, today, politically, a lot of people here, times is very important. And in reality, I will let you know about later, about compared with uh, different university ranking exercises, and why I'm feel, my feeling is that uh, time is, uh, is good to drive the research performance of our universities. So before I start, I'll just give you some idea about our university. Basically, it's uh, very similar to other universities in Australia. Okay, originally it's a like title college. So then until, uh, that's, uh, we start from the 1908, and then later on, it will become a Swimming Technical College. So after, until 1992, that was actually was the first year I went to Australia, and Swinburne became a university. It's very similar to other universities like RMIT. And this, and now our university are uh, getting through about 25 years of transformations, and now we got a lot of quite modern uh, our buildings. So our university basically has a lot of different focus areas. For example, we have microfabrications, product design and engineering. Uh, we've got uh, nanomaterials, uh, data science, Astrophysics is very strong. Uh, solar technology, civil engineering is very strong as well. Later on, I'll give you some examples. And also, we have uh, aviation. We try to train the pilot. And basically, we already have a joint program with Hong Kong and Thailand to do, uh, train the pilot. And now, aviation industry is growing very fast. And we are not talking about research at this stage. We're talking about the pilot training. And then once you touch with the research, then we we'll go to material science and new material for aircraft, how to repair the aircraft. And our university also have a project of Airbus to look after the, the repair scheme for the new uh, uh, composite aircraft. And we also have neuroscience, look about the brain, okay, all these kind of things. So when you look at here, okay, our university basically is not that big. We only have three faculties. And one is our faculty of business and law. The other one is the faculty of health, arts, and design. The last one is a very applicable. That is a uh, faculty of science, engineering, and technologies. So just like the, some of the questions we asked, we're also facing to a lot of issues is uh, how to attract the good students, particularly now a lot of students they do not know math. Okay, at least uh, not the problem in Korea. Okay, yesterday I asked the questions, but at least it's a problem in Australia in some Asian Pacific regions. And we have about 21 departments and five institutes. This institute basically later on we introduced to you is our research institutes. And to support these institutes, we have about 15 research centers. So where we are, okay, we look at here, okay, this is Australia and then this is uh, Victoria. And we are located in the very close to the uh, uh, center of Melbourne. So from our university to the center of Melbourne, the central, po central point, is take less than 10 minutes. So uh, we have a free campus, okay, one is Malaysia, and our student number is not that many, okay, only about 13 to 14,000. 
And when you look at the international student, we only have 27%. That's uh, to us, is quite less. Okay, we want to increase more. Uh, in terms of ranking, it's important because uh, we have to look at uh, how many international students you have. And then in terms of our reputation, it's also important. Today, you train your students, they are from other countries, but later on, after they graduate, they might be a very successful alumni in other countries and then can help us to, to do the survey. So we have to have a short-term and long-term plan how to plan your university become famous in the future, but not now, not next year, not year after next year. Have to be long-term strategies. And uh, we are not too many faculties, so we have about 900, but in, in 900 we have uh, quite less international members. So this is also one of the issues, okay, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have been tackling. And this morning breakfast, we always talk about how to attract talents. It's not that easy, okay, even if you have money, you may not be able to easily attract talents. Uh, Talents is a one issue, but the other thing is how to support the talents is another issue. Okay, a good talent come to your university may not just for your name, but they also want, if I come to your university, what else I can do? What support the university can give to me? And then I can develop my research strength. So the whole thing together is still talk about money and then space. So our research strength basically is a few areas I just mentioned already, okay, to use uh, aviations. And now we try to develop a research area in human factor engineering. So this is one particular area in aviation, and a lot of people will say aviation, there's no research at all. And even before I moved to Australia, okay, I developed one of the aviation programs in Hong Kong. And still, there's a mainly focus on undergraduate program. But if you go to the high level research, a lot of people will say, we are very difficult to, with good talents in aviation, in, in aviation area with good publication record. It's very difficult because aviation, a lot of people identify that's not research area. But in reality, human factor is one of the very big areas okay, in aviation, and then we, I'm a graduate from aerospace engineering. I did a human factor engineering before, and then afterward I apply my knowledge into product design. It's the same thing, you design aircraft and design the head of dryer, it's no difference, one's a big product, one is small product, but the philosophy is the same. So there's a reason why, okay, we are trying to develop one of the research areas in human factor engineering, and we have a physics, uh, we have a physics and actual physics, okay, later on you will see we get a lot of money, we also have a research center of excellence to drive this area, and then basically, uh, recently we developed a program, a, a methodology, to look at the gravitational wave. So this, we also have a paper, just, an, uh, just come up in science. And then we also have advanced manufacturing, okay, similar to all the ranking exercise, okay, in the engineering field, we can, uh, most of our highly rented university basically is driven by the engineering research. So basically, these uh, advanced manufacturers cover a lot of things, including material science, including engineering, including industry 4.0, there's a very emerging areas, and also including 3D printings. And uh, we have a lot of collaborations with uh, different universities in the world uh, uh, go along this area. And we have uh, photonics, and uh, these are basically we develop in material, that's uh, for the battery, for the power. And uh, recently, we also have a laser, laser technology to draw to draw, to, to draw patents on your hair. So now we're working with the industry with a, a part for the patents and to develop a high capacity hard disk. Hard disk. And uh, neuroscience is uh, a big area and product engineering design later on you will see a lot of students working in this area and then we got a lot of financial support from the industry to drive this area. And the last two are the very, very important area is that digital research and innovations. Just like yesterday, okay, uh, day before, uh, yesterday morning, we were talking about AI, the artificial intelligence, everything related to the data analysis, everything related to the digital research. And even talk about product design, now the new environment is talking about Industry 4.0, everything goes to the computerized, okay? And we don't need to do everything step by step by human hand, through the human hands, and everything goes to the computer. So this is one of the big areas we are now working on, cyber security, Internet of Things. Okay, we are working with the government uh, uh, on several projects along this line. And uh, big data is also another big issue, okay? Big data, the, the thing is in the world, there's a lot of data. How we can best use these data to work out the solution for problems, okay? Problems including environmental problems, social problems, scientific problems, engineering problems, okay? But the big data is not that easy, it's very complicated mathematics, okay? Similar to the ranking system, okay? We have so many data sent to the Times and then how they analyze analyze all these data. I think that the previous session all you learned already. It's not that easy, we need to have some skill. Okay, data is a lot. How we can best your the data to do something useful, that is the key. So, with the talents you have, then what else you need to do? 
you have to have some tools to support them to do the work, good research. So in our university, a few years ago, we, we tried to streamline all the laboratories into the 18 specialist facilities, try to support our people doing good research. And all the facility basically is open to all our colleagues to do the work. Okay? No matter you are in which department, you can access into all these facilities. Okay? Providing that you, are, you, can, you to tell us what do you, what do you want to do. Okay? And this is a very important part. As I already talked about, talent is important, support is also important. So basically, these are, these are three layers okay, of our work to support our research. Basically, we have a one percent. This is basically to help our researchers try to convert their investment, uh, inventions, try to convert their research funding into commercialized products. Okay, that is a very important. Okay, we try to help them to get IP, try to get, help them to get the industry support. And the next stage would be the digital platform. Okay, try to help them. Okay, we have a digital platform. Try to help them to conduct a good research using all the data, using computer software, okay, to analyze some good results. And of course, afterward, we will have a different research centers. Okay, there is a use to support the whole university research. But one thing that is very important is that this research center is not belong to any departments, any faculties. It's across disciplinary. So we try to use the research center to support different departments to do the research work. So that's a very, very important. So if you want to enhance your publications, you want to get your publication, publication cited. Of course, the field is important, but multidisciplinary somehow is more easy for people to accept your publication and also cite your papers. I'm working on the fiber optic sensor embedded in composite material. That's what, that was my PhD project. And because the cloth is a penury, at that time, they talk about 20 years ago, almost all of the papers are highly cited now. The reason is the cloth is a penury. So back to, back to here, okay, the topics. I'm going to tell you about a lot of things about my university, and this driven us why we need to think about the strategy, because our university is small. If I have a lot of money, okay, that's not a big problem. Okay? I can do whatever I, go, I want to do. I can change all the people, I change all the equipment, buy a new land, build a new building okay, for my university. But no, okay? I love university in Australia. I love similar science university in Australia as well. So that's the reason I picked the topics, how a university research strategies can drive Success in uh, a drive success in the world university ranking. So back to here, what's the perfect education systems? Okay, we have a lot of argument about. Oh, uh, everybody go to research. Do you think this is correct? Everybody to go to teaching. Do you think a university can just do teaching? So what is the balance of all these items, these factors? Research, teaching, and service community. We taking this one is that we work for the professional body. We work scholarly activity. We work for the industry, how to make a balance. Is this there's balance? I don't think a lot of people, if you are working in the university, you know this is not like this, in reality, okay? And then come to here. Do you think this one is, looks better? But the problem is how come this one has got zero score? We have a lot of academics try to work with the industry and then try to get a lot of money from the industry, but eventually they will not be honored, recognized during the promotion exercise. Because most of some of the universities look this one is bigger. This is very small. And then what else? Or we just give a small weighting, or put teaching is higher. So there's a lot of argument okay, within a lot of universities. But to me, teaching is a primary role because we are getting our salary from taxpayer. We have to teach well their second generations, their next generations. But the problem without research, you have nothing to sell because your university is still talking about something. 20 years ago, all the knowledge. So, teaching and research are equally important. We have to do research to get some new funding, some new technology, and get this kind of new knowledge to teach your next generations. So, in reality, how to rate is not easy. It highly depends on your university mission, visions, your senior management, how to, they position their universities. It's not that easy. Because ask me, a lot of universities want to go up ranking faster than go to teaching, or go to research. But I can tell you about, in the short term, you may be, may be able, your rank is going up very fast because you get a lot of highly sighted people. You got a lot of money getting good people. But the problem is that if you do not teach well, what happened about five to 10 years later, your graduates? They don't like you. They won't help you to, to, to do survey. They even they have a real, they will be, will be very rich. They don't donate any single dollar back to the universities. So we have to have some sort of the long-term and short-term planning, how to do okay, well for your university in the long run. Okay, to get it, it well, uh, well recognized and also make it more famous. 
So going back to the, I'll just take this one as a young university ranking, okay, the exercise, okay, the, the, the criteria. And you look at all this, okay, look as very, uh, uh, at least our research and citation, these two are combined together, actually talk about research. But you go to teaching, okay, it's uh, basically, if you look at carefully, it's a part of this area, is related to research. If you look at this part, okay, part of this area also related to research. So basically more than 70% 70, 70 of the score are go to research related activities. So it means that we still have to do good research in your university. But I'm not saying that we are not doing good teaching. Doing good research is to back you up to do a good teaching. Okay? But I'm not saying that 100% go to research and no teaching. Okay? That's not my, my, my personal preference. Okay? I got a lot of what you relate to teaching, but also research. The reason is that I try to balance these two. When you look at all this, okay, we want to get research done good okay, here, but we also want to get more research students, that's doctorate students. But basically, for a small university, because we cannot get a lot of funding from the government, so sometimes how to fight for more student quota is a big issue. Okay? So this part basically is very difficult to achieve the score. Okay, higher. And then going back to the citation, uh, this uh, highly depends on the skill or your, your paper writing, your, or your research area, and there's a strategy, okay, making your people more active okay, with the research community. A lot of people do research because they go to their room and then close the door, do their own research, not going out, not telling other people about their own work, then could start your work. Okay? So when you look at all this, Basically, 70% research related. Of course, if you go to world ranking, it's very similar. Okay, I'm not going through all this one uh, together. So, by looking at our, my university, this actually is my university. If you look at the student size, basically, from the top is uh, more students, from the bottom is uh, less students. And if you look at the rankings, in the world university ranking, okay, based, uh, it's still a lot of uh, uh, big university ranking is not that high. At least, uh, 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 not, that better, not better than my university. But if you go to another ranking, it's a basically highly influenced by the student number. And if you look at the international students, some universities have a lot of international students. The other ranking is that they got more score because of the survey is, is contribute more score, more mark, about 50 to 60 percent. But in terms of the world ranking, basically it will, will not really uh, uh, affected by all this kind of international student number because of sometimes these are more majority of them undergraduate students. So what the strategy we should do? By looking at all the criteria, by looking at our, my size, uh, the size of my university, basically, we know about there are several factors that is, that is important. We have to look into details and how to improve it. For example, how to increase the student numbers, international and local. How to offer more offshore programs to get more people known about, know about my university overseas, not only in Australia. Funding model, how to get more funding to the university Small universities cannot get more funding from the government. How we can do to make more funding, okay? In the industry, donations, or uh, still government, okay? And research culture is important, okay? This morning we also discussed about this issue, how to build up the culture, everybody know about what is research, okay? Just like yesterday, I remember one of the audience asked about, the problem is not, we do not know about research. The problem is the government doesn't know what is research excellence, and they do not know how to fund to the university. But in reality, we still have to do our best, okay, within our university to build a good culture. Incentive, okay, uh, I asked one question already. If you're doing well with the industry, would the university honor your work? Or they just care about you got the funding from the government? Okay, just like the, in Australia, we got ARC funding. In Hong Kong, we got GRF. In America, we got NSF. You got this funding, okay, then you will be promoted easily. But in reality, this funding, the money is not big. But you get the money from the industry, it's much, much bigger. Okay, talk about five to ten times. But when the time you go to promotion, normally they don't look at it. They just look at the funding from the government. And the most important part is uh, I face to the problem is marketing strategy. Because a lot of academics, they, are, they honestly, honestly, okay, not everybody, but a lot, is a dealing with the industry. The link of the real line. You will talk to them. Well, you you have doing good work. You have to do market yourself. They don't. They don't. They don't support. They don't agree. They say I don't need to, to do any marketing work, uh, marketing activities because my work is good. People will know. But you don't go out. Could know your university. Could know your work. So sometimes we have to pay a lot of effort in the 
in, in, in planning our marketing, a different marketing, marketing plan, uh, uh, campaigns, or uh, uh, strategy in the long run, short term and long term. So all these are correlated, okay? Not only single item you can win, you have to get all done together. So sometimes I try to do the analysis about my university, and I also recommend all other universities do the same, to see where's your positions, how to compare with other better universities, and then which part you should do some improvements, okay? We do a lot of this analysis, okay, uh, internally, and then try to tackle on different sessions to do, to invest our, our resources to do it better. So back to our strategy, what we try to do is say, we try to promote our university through different areas. One is e-channels. That's a very important. What is e-channel? Sending email is not enough. We have to go to Google, so we have to go to Facebook. We have to go to LinkedIn. Because now the, the, the digital environment is totally different with 10 years ago. And I talked to my colleagues, okay, we have to put something in, the, in, the, in Facebook. They even do not, have, he, 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 he even does not have Facebook. He said no use of Facebook, but a lot of young generation, they, they look at Facebook. And they transmit the message is much, much farther, faster than you advertise in the newspapers. Research culture is important, okay, we are trying to focus on the quality rather than quantities. Okay, the reason is that now all the rankings go to, later on, all the rankings in countries is look at the impact of your research and not number of papers. And then uh, increase the student number, that's important because without students, no one has to do research. Okay, and uh, this uh, also increase the publications, increase the PhD student number, that's our target, and also to increase, so we can increase the citations. And job research center, that uh, will make your university more global. Okay, not talking about job research center within your country, it's outside your country. And of course, we are, I'm on a strategy, we try to recruit more highly cited researchers. But this is very difficult, it's very expensive. Because a highly cited researcher normally requests more. Okay, not only one person, it's one team to come over. So back to here, you will see our strategy is uh, we are launching a lot of our, our impact magazine. We send to our alumni, our industrial partners, and also uh, some of the government uh, 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 officers, and to show them about what else we have been doing. Okay, what's the good things we do, what we have been doing, uh, we, we, we have done, okay, with the, in relation to our research. We also have a lot of the e newsletter now start to send to all our graduates, all our partners as well. So remember, you cannot, don't think about all this kind of e newsletter people will read all. Because, um, for example, if something related to engineering, you send to the business people, they may not, they may not understand okay, what exactly here. But the, pro the problem is, the, the point is uh, to remind them your university is there. Keep doing something new. Just let them know. Okay, when they tell you ask them for help, it will come easily. And then this, uh, also we try to encourage our colleagues, okay, doing more research, and then we will try to help them to advertise, to publish their work, okay, in different magazines, different open channels, okay. And this is very important. Remember, one of the uh, academics in the university, we cannot, we, should, we do not want to uh, uh, have an academic just doing teaching. We also try to groom them doing research. If he or she does not have any research background, we try to get the mentors to work with him or her. So event, you try to make the university more people, okay, uh, really involved in the research er uh, uh, areas. So, because uh, of the, uh, the last three years, okay, efforts, okay, we actually, so this year, we got a, a, a big uh, a grant, we received that there's uh, 31 million, okay, to develop our uh, uh, research excellence centers, okay, in the uh, gravitational wave discovery. So, this is a big rule, okay. Um, it's a very big area, and also we also have two teams involved in the ARC, ARC Center of Excellence in other areas that lead by other universities. All we do, we do not really, okay, uh, uh, just focus on who get this one. Even we are participate into the other research center, we also welcome and encourage our college to do it. Because we are a small university, we cannot aim every time we can win proposals and grants. But we try to let our college to learn how other, other big universities, how they win the grant, and then to learn during the process, they may know the trick, and later on they may write the proposal by themselves. And we also try to establish some research center, okay, with other you know, uh, and, and, and other organizations in different countries. For example, we have autos, uh, Malaysia uh, autos, uh, uh, motive uh, working with the Malaysian Automotive Institute. We also have a research center working with them on electric car design. Particular now, we also open another line with Hong Kong to look after the battery design for electric car. And then we also have a lot of uh, connection with uh, some of the big enterprises, for example, Waipu. They just uh, donate the money to us to a professional chair and also to support a uh, uh, few PhD scholarships and to work in the digital innovation area and use their platform to, to teach our students how to 
analyze the data and use the data to solve the problems. So another big area we are now working on is a joint PhD program with different universities, different organizations in the world. And um, this joint research uh, PhD program is that we work with other universities, okay? And then when the students join this program, they can get two certificates after they graduate. The good thing is that we can, we can easy to increase the number of PhD students. And also internationalization, we got a student from other countries, okay, then we work together. And one thing that is very good is like Hong Kong PC, Hong Kong, Hong Kong Productivity Councils. They have a lot of research projects working with the industry. And the issue is that they employ a lot of researchers working on that project, but the turnover rate is too, too fast, okay? Maybe the people working for one to two years, then they're gone. So what we try to do is just engage those kind of researchers into our PhD program. I know when they time to work on that program, they would got, they are just doing their own PhD based on that project. But at the same time, because all the project is in industry related, then we can expand our industrial partnership with different sectors. So this is the way what, how we do to build up our own in the, uh, international industry network and of course increase our student numbers. So when you look at here, so we also got a different research center and uh, with different country. And one of the center is uh, in, the, in, the, in Shandong University, uh, working with Shandong University and with the support of Weihai Economic and uh, technology zone, that is a government zone. And they provide us about 2,000 uh, 2, meter square space to build up our research center for zero dollars. Okay, we don't need to pay anything. And Shandong University support all the facilities. And what we try to do, one of the projects we're talking about, how to avoid the earthquake, how to, how to strengthen the structure of the earthquake. And what we try to do is say, we propose using composite material to repair the structure, to reinforce the structure, and make the structure stronger. Okay, so actually I've got a video here and uh, we can just uh, 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 press on the video and then we go real quick and to see. We can use a simulation to simulate how the earthquakes look like and then eventually based on the, all this kind of uh, data and we know what is the structural performance of this structure and then we know how to reinforce it, protect it and to avoid uh, 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 the damage due to uh, uh, the structural damage due to earthquake. And this is only one machine in Australia and talk about six degree of vibration to simulate the full earthquake conditions. And this is one of the projects we work with Shandong and that's the reason why you have to understand about what is the aim, what is the objective in that particular country, okay? What is the need in that particular country? In China, there's a lot of earthquake within in the past two decades. So how to make the structure is uh, earthquake resistance. Then this is the key. So that's the reason we start all this project and then we work out this joint research center, look into these uh, 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 particular areas. And of course, this, uh, we also have set up our milestone in different, uh, for our joint PhD programs and then we try to increase a more number in different countries. And uh, this target, okay. of course, this only target, sometimes you may not be able to achieve, but at least we've got some goal, what you want to do. So by, uh, by implementing all these, uh, 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 um, uh, activities, okay, in the past two to three years. So we obviously we will see, okay, some of the, our figures, okay, have been improved. And particularly in the uh, citation research uh, and also the, uh, some sort of the incomes, okay. It's take time, okay, I cannot say we are very good because uh, we still have a long way to go. But at least we know about this is a step, okay, we have to go through. There's a process we have to go through. And of course, um, um, just what I'm, um, I'm just talking to you about, we are not only talking about research, and we also have to try to find some way to support our undergraduate students because they are the most important, okay? You get good students, you get good alumni, then your university will success. If you look at a lot of top universities, Harvard, MIT, Oxford, Cambridge, their alumni network is very strong. And if you need money, you can just make a call, everybody will give you money. So because in the past, they are very concentrated on their undergraduate programs teaching. So what we try to do is that we do a lot of activities, okay, to support our students go out, and the reason is this one actually is uh, we got the overseas sponsor to support our students to go to Hong Kong and China. Basically, this student design product for the company. And then uh, even the last day, okay, they don't, uh, okay, uh, uh, took all of us to go to his boat, okay, for a boat trip for dinner. And the, the most important is uh, we have to groom our students to let them know about exactly what they should do, what happened in the real market. I always talk about is uh, for the academics, you cannot just always sit inside your room and read the journal with newspaper and you know everything. You have to go out to talk to people. Particularly, in the, in, 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 recently, okay, the world has been changing very fast. Even business model this year and last year will be changed. 
and this year and next year will be different. And then you have to talk to people know about what is the business model adopt, have been adopted by the industry, and then you know how to, talk, how to teach your students. So that's the reason why in the undergraduate programs, okay, although I'm not after research, but I still try to put some, some sort of influence in the undergraduate program to let the student to get, have a more uh, connections with the industry. So this is the key. So now we get a lot of our students from different countries, and uh, because uh, we saw a lot of different agreements with different universities around the world, and also, of course, uh, in, the, in Germany, we also signed the agreement with the company to, have, uh, to provide their PhD placementship for our students. Okay, so the summary, okay, what we have to do is our strategy is that the most important is that we enhance more international collaboration. That is a key. And then uh, uh, increasing the number of PhD students is a key, but uh, that is a way why we have an offshore PhD program. And then the, the increasing the impact of research outcomes. So that's uh, what I'm saying, that we encourage our colleagues to do their work with impact and not just a lumber. And increasing the research income is important, but remember, we are not just talking about government money. It's industry money is also very important because industry will recognize your university and later on, they will tell you about how to do the best and also help you do surveys. And um, you know, the incentive on the fair work load model, this uh, always argues, okay? I ask the people who go to the industry and then they always argue about there's no incentive from the universities. During a promotional exercise, nobody care about my involvement in the industrial projects. So I think this, uh, we have to honor okay, all the people who are really working for the industry. And of course, uh, the new government model in Australia already changed. Okay? In the past, they only look at the funding from the government. But now they also uh, pay quite attention on the funding from the industry. And the last one is the most important, right marketing strategy. Okay? Uh, it's not easy because a lot of universities, will, if you, all universities want to be the top okay, in the ranking exercise. But all universities have to have their own uniqueness, their own positions. Okay? We cannot just say, I want to do everything, teaching, research, and, and, and industry, in industry projects. You cannot do everything, but you have to position yourself. Okay? What you want to do? What is the objective you want to, to achieve? So this is the end of my presentation. And then before I ending, okay, just introduce to you about Melbourne's. Remember, this is a very good place okay, to live, work, and, and uh, study. And you see there's a lot of different things that you may not be able to see here, at least the koala, kangaroo, and also the penguins. Okay, if you go to Melbourne, remember, just let me, give me a call and then drop me a mess, uh, an email. Come to visit us, and then probably I will bring you to the coast to see all this. The most important wine and oyster are very good. Okay, thank you very much. You. Good time. <laughs> thank you, um, Professor Lai. I can, I can vouch for Melbourne. I've been there many times, and the zoo is indeed wonderful. No, we um, don't miss the guardian. That's no good. Next time you just call me. I will do, I will do. <laughs> um, if you want to have a think of some questions, uh, I'll come to the floor in a second, but I, I'll, I'll kick off with a, a quick one if I may. Yes. We've heard throughout this conference about the various ways universities can you know, improve their, their performance. It was interesting to see you putting marketing right up at the top of, of your list at the end yes, there. Yes. Uh, encouraging your academics, it seems, to, to blog, to use social media, to write for magazines. Uh, I think that's great, partly because I commission blogs for Times Higher Education, and it's, yeah. it's sometimes difficult to get uh, academics to do that kind of outreach yes. work. I wonder, how do you encourage them to do it? It takes a lot of time. How do you convince them that it's a good use of their time? And perhaps more importantly, how do you measure the impact of that kind of work by, by your scholars and how it then relates to your performance internationally? No, basically, uh, it's a, I, 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 truly, I truly agree okay, with you. Is that it's very difficult to talk to the academics and ask them to do some marketing activities. Very difficult. Even you ask them to write a articles okay, for us to put in the website, it's not that easy because they feel that I'd rather write one more journal articles. Mm. There's a value, okay, you've got one more journal, but putting in the website is nothing. But normally what we try to do, we try to pick up a few very active people to work on along this line. They put the article in the website and then we use the percent to help them to find the industrial partner and then to build several successful cases. And they use these cases to show those other uh, academics they do not like to do this kind of work. And then let them know, if you write some article to us, and we put in the website, we put some open, open uh, media, uh, the e-channels, and then we can help you to find the donor, find the uh, uh, supporter, the industrial partner, to work with you. So once they see the effect, they see the benefit, then they will do it. So we, we but it takes time. But the way how to measure is difficult. Because uh, even I'm, I cannot promise to you, say you give me the article I put in our website, tomorrow you got a donor. No way, okay, it takes time. But the most important is that we have to get some mentor to talk to our particular for the young researchers about your work is a very variable and then what else is missing? 
and know how to do it better, and then we can bring you go to the industry to talk to the people, and he, he, they may be interested about your work and put, to put the money in. Because now academic is more difficult is getting funding. Okay? Getting government funding is even more difficult, but it, they can have a channel opportunity to get the funding from the industry and fast way to, do, to get the money, and this is something that they want. So I'm, I truly believe all academics have their own agenda behind. You have to hit their agenda to, 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 to convince them to do the work. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from the room? Maybe I'll, I'll ask another one then while you guys get your um, thinking caps on. Um, a theme that has been a constant throughout this, this conference this morning and in your session was the importance of money in uh, improving international performance. By no means the only. Uh, the only important factor, but certainly a big one. Uh, in Australia, uh, yesterday we heard from Caroline McMillan who showed us that the ability to attract research funding in Australia is, as you might expect, very strongly correlated with the age of an institution. Uh, your institution is young as well. I wonder how that makes you feel. Does it, does it, does it make you angry? Do you think it's a true meritocracy? Uh, uh, how, how does government funding in Australia, do you think, impact on your position? No, I, I, my, uh, firstly, I tried to answer with you about one of the questions about the aging of the university may not affect okay, the university to attract talents. Uh, because of the talent, normally they want to go to that university because they want to look at the research environment in that university and the support from that university to his or own, her own research. So even some of the very big universities, they are somehow, for example, civil engineering, if one of the universities is very strong in civil engineering, if you bring a new guy come in, he may feel that I have no way to ex excel my research because the team is too big. Mm -hmm. So somehow for the young university, they take advantage because we just established, if you come in here, you can help me to establish my uh, research string in civil engineering. Then it's more easy to attract the talents. So you have to look at, some people want the brand, some people want the opportunity, then you have to understand what, what he or she wants. So this, uh, uh, compared with young and old university, is the, this is the key. And the old university somehow may not take any benefits to get the good people. That's my opinion. And in terms of funding, is a, is, a, is a issue because uh, you get a talent, you have to pay a lot. And old university, long the funding model, funding model is different with the young university. They get more money from the government. So that's the reason why in my strategy is that we try to do something more to attract the industry incomes rather than we just focus on ARC, the, the government funding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, a question here. Thank you. Hi, Alan. It's a great talk. Uh, this is Dion Yu Yang, Dean of Global Affairs at China Medical University. And I think all your strategy are very good. Uh, and I think the most important thing, uh, could you tell us the secret how to implement your strategy well? For example, you want to enhance more international collaboration. How do you ensure you will get a very good partner and how do you implement this well? Thank you very much. Uh, this is a very good question. Before I moved to Australia, I faced with this problem as well. And um, because of cultural issue, okay, now we are in Taiwan, and uh, my collab collaboration is mainly in Taiwan, uh, Korea, Japan, China, and also the uh, Hong Kong. And in the Western country, they are, they are the way to build the collaboration through email. They like to send you email, do you want to collaborate with me? Oh yes, okay, everything through email. But in some country, you cannot, you have to face to face to talk. So this is the reason I try to change the culture in my university. Is that if you want to establish a collaboration with some country, you have to send someone to go there at least to say hello. At least I know who you are. This is a very simple. So sometimes uh, we have to change the whole culture. You have to understand the culture in that particular country. Then you know how to do it. And this is the way uh, uh, when the child joined uh, this university, still has a quite struggling on how to uh, convince our course to go out. But now we are very successful to have a lot of collaboration with different universities already. And we also uh, successfully recruit a lot of PhD students. And we can see the growth, we can see the, uh, the benefits. And now a lot of people, particularly in our research team, they already know about if you want to establish with, uh, uh, with this university, you have to send someone to go there, have a look, and bring the people come to your university as well to have a look. And then to this kind of uh, 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 exchange, that is more easy to build up this collaboration. But the most important is that you have to find the right strength. You cannot just say, oh, because this is a good university, you just go there to collaborate. But in reality, your university is not that in, in, in that particular mature on that research area. So you have to have a good marriage, good marriage. So otherwise, it got trouble. And the other trick is uh, when they try to bring the people come to visit your university. Uh, honestly, we are a small university, we are not all the laboratories are very good. So try not to bring those, those uh, uh, visit the to see some laboratory that's not mature, that's very poor, very bad, very dirty. You have to show them 
uh, with purpose, okay? If you collaborate with someone with civil engineering, bring them just look at the civil engineering stuff. Don't bring them go to their marketing stuff, product design stuff, but they are not interested. And then eventually they will feel they have nothing to be collaborative with you. So I think some, my personal, trick, uh, my personal um, opinion is a, your marketing strategy is go first, okay? When you go to a different university, think about what is the culture in that particular country? What else they want to do? And what's the, ban the most important, what benefit they can get by collaborating with your universities? Because there's both sides interest. Thank you very much. I think we're out of time, unfortunately, okay. for this session. Um, okay, we'll take one more question. Um, if we're quick, please. Yes, this lady here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Shia Porn Watanasiri from Mephalong University, Thailand. I feel really happy when I heard from Dr. Allen about the young university um, brightening for the ranking. And you're showing the perfect of education system. Now I would like to know from you, is the secret of the Swinburne University, what the percentage of the, what the, the proportion that you set up? But I had seen that it's for the research, but you also have the service, um, community services also in that kind of that system too. Please, Kat. No, basically, if you ask me about the formula, I have to ask my vice chancellor, and only she know. <laughs> but um, my personal feeling is that research, uh, in terms of your personal commitment in the university academics, teaching is always my personal priority. But the problem is that why we are more, uh, uh, um, we are encouraging our staff doing more research, because research is a base to build up our new technologies. And this new technology basically is you to sell your university to the outsider, to the gener next generations. I always talk to our colleagues, when the time before I moved to Australia, I work in Hong Kong, I talk to my colleagues, don't always just tell the student everything from the book. Okay, you, if you write a book, you know all, all the information from the books. Actually talk about at least five years ago, all the technologies. But the world changes too fast, okay? The technology developed five years ago may not be applicable for today. So the most important is a, uh, we have to keep doing our research and better our knowledge to teach our students. But the, your attitude to teach a student, that is a very important, okay? We are not just coming to the class, just very rough to tell the student, okay, what you want to do, go to the book and then finish your te teaching class. It's not the way to do it this way. We are really trying to teach them, okay? So that's the reason I'm talking about primary role is we have to keep our good attitude to teach. But research is always important as well in the university, particularly young universities. Thank you very much. We are over time now, so uh, all that remains to be said is please join me in thanking uh, Professor Alan Lau. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next time. See you soon, absolutely. We will have uh, the usual logistics change on stage. And if our next panelists would like to uh, ready themselves and join me over here, thank you. Great. Take a seat, yeah, it's fine. Yes, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. That's first you present, you first you present. Uh, Grace Lynn will be chairing the discussion, sure, so I'll introduce sure. everybody now, oh, and then I'll hand over. Let me give you that in case there are slides. Sure, sure. I'll introduce you. Uh, Me is going to present first. Yes. Uh, While well, we sort that out on stage uh, and let our panelists uh, arrange their order, um, I'll just introduce the people who will be speaking in this session on impact and metrics uh, measuring success. Uh, chairing the session will be Grace Lin, Vice President of Asia University. Uh, the panelists are Xu Heng Shen, Vice President of National Chongqi University, uh, Wim Meester, Head of Project Management at Scopus, uh, Toyoharo Nawa, President of Hokkaido University, He Yung Shin, Executive Vice President for Research and Development at Seoul National University. If everyone's in position, I will hand over to your chair. Uh, please welcome everyone to the stage. Your chair is Grace Lin, Vice President of Asia University.